Hey, it's your boy Picante Nino coming at you with another video. Today, I'm going to commit heresy against my own class. I'm going to tell you guys how to fight against Awakening Zerker. I know there's not many of us around, so that means like a lot of people don't know the matchup. So I'm going to go into good detail. Very, very minuscule detail on how to fight Awakening Zerker. So let's jump into it. Okay, so let's jump into it, man. I'm, I'm kind of excited to tell you guys how to fight against us. Hopefully we uh, end up losing a lot more fights because of this video and everyone's going to hate me. But I feel like it is some good content that people would like to know. So yeah, let's start off the music. Alright, so from my experience, either Zerker is really hard to fight against or extremely easy to win against. There's no in-between. There's either a good Zerker or a not good Zerker. There's no in between. There's no decent Zerker. There's no meh Zerker. And there's no lukewarm Zerker. It's either you're good or you're still learning. So, Zerkers are very intimidating whenever you're looking at them fight. Don't be intimidated. Just go in and send it. I'm going to tell you guys exact things to look for. So, in this video, we're going to go over common weaknesses, key skills, the Zerker's game plan, how to tell if you're doing good against the Zerker. Things to look out for so you could punish. I'm going to show you guys how to engage or like the beginning phase of a fight against a Zerker and what they would likely want to do. And then I'm also going to go against certain class matchups that the majority of you guys might be playing or not. So yeah. And then I might also throw in a couple of things extra and whenever I think about them. And it might not go in this order, but we're just going to send it. So yeah, let's jump into it. Okay, so let's go over common weaknesses. The biggest weakness that Zerker has is that we don't have a lot of protections even though it looks like we are very protected. The reason why it looks like we're extremely protected as a Zerker is A, we either run a lot of resist, or B, we know how to rotate everything to have minimal gaps. The thing is is that there's a lot of gaps between Zerker's skills. And if you don't know how to fight against a Zerker and you're not too sure if it's protected or not, the best thing you could possibly do against a Zerker is get behind them. The number one disadvantage thing that Zerkers would do when they want to lose is let you get behind them. Because most Zerkers protections are frontal blocks. Whenever we throw out our cannon right here, switching from axe to a cannon, that's a frontal block. Whenever we pop this skill right here, that looks like this, that's a frontal block. So whenever we're doing this, we're stationary, get behind us. If we're doing anything like this, we are stationary. So you know what you do? You get behind us. That's one weakness that Zerker has. So he, number one against Zerker is always get behind them. That is their number one weakness because they're the least protected through the front. Another thing too is that Zerkers rely a lot on movement skills. And, and what I mean by movement skills is skills like Lava Piercer. Stuff like Giant Leap. Stuff like Shooting Mobility. Stuff like, what is this, Feral Stampede? All of these scale off of movement speed and attack speed. So if you slow us in attack speed or movement speed, or you do that universal buff that hits both of them, that affects both things. So that makes it where we can't even like move. Also, Shake Off is affected by it too. So whenever we do this, it's also slowed. And by whenever you slow a Zerker at any of these moves, these movement moves, you don't get that much distance. And Zerker is a class all about movement. Another thing to add too is that whenever you see a Zerker with their axes out instead of their cannon, their axes, Zerker has no protection in axe form. There's only a couple of skills I could think about in axe form that give protection, which is this jumping move. It looks like a Goomba Stomp called a Predatory Hunt. And then basically Lava Piercer are the only two skills that are protected in Zerker axe form so whenever you see a zerker with their axes out go in and start throwing some cc's you see those axes out throw cc's keep on throwing them keep on throwing them okay so moving on to some key skills the key skills you want to look out for zerker are basically slows and just grabs in general that's the very that's the very gist of it 
There's also another skill that I want to also throw in, which is catches. There's two ways that Zerker usually commonly catches you with, or possibly three. The common way that's been out since the game is just the stomp. This stomp right here will stun you, or it doesn't stun you, it stiffens you and also applies a slow. And then another way they could also catch you is by doing this, I call it the Kobe. Whenever Zerka does that and they have range against you, they could click to move it to be an engage. So you want to make sure that you're not letting yourself get caught by that. So Zerka will usually just do this and just launch themselves forward with it. But the one key skills that you want to avoid that will lose you the fight instantly when a Zerker lands it is this skill that's called Devastation. It looks like Zerker's doing a little Pikachu move. And whatever this does, it slows you by a good amount. And we are going to go over the skill right now called Devastation. Devastation gives you minus 30% movement speed and attack speed and cast speed for 10 seconds. What's really crazy about this skill is that the cooldown of it is exactly the duration that it gives you. So that means they could permanently keep up this slow on you for 10 seconds. Another thing that's really crazy about this skill is that there's two skills inside the skill. So whenever the Zerker does his Pikachu move, it does a little AoE 360 around them. Just respect it. It's either you don't engage them while they're doing it, or you try to iframe in there and grab them while they're doing the skill. Keep in mind, Zerker could also use this skill on the last hit of Devastation. You see how he lifts up his arm at the last hit, and he emphasizes the last hit of Devastation? He could save the last hit of Devastation for later. So that means he could always have that slow up. And so this is what the last hit is. We could only cast the last hit if you have it on hotbar. So it just looks like this, which is very hard to uh, to know when a Zerker is going to slow you. So just be prepared for the slows. Whenever you do get slowed, Zerker is at extreme advantage. So you kind of want to avoid it. Another thing that Zerkers like to do... Um, they like to use their 10% or 20% BSR and just linger the the slow. So you see there? And I'm just going to do it again. So you could time the slows so you could bait people into engaging you because they think that the devastation is over. But in fact, you're just holding the last hit for later with the Black Spirit Rage. So it just be like, boom, boom, boom. They're waiting. And it's like, okay, boom, they're close. Now initiate the last hit. So that's one thing that a lot of good Zerkers like to bait people with, is the, the Pikachu slow. So whenever you see the Pikachu slow, respect it. Respect it, don't get near them. If not, iframe and grab them. Another key skill to look out for is uh, this skill right here. It looks like he just, you know, does a football tackle towards you with his axes out. It, it throws a stun and it hits for a lot too, so that means it's a constant stun. And it's very strong on catching iframe classes. But the thing is, is that usually whenever you see a Zerker use this skill, it's super unprotected. So you don't want to be in range, or if you do see a Zerker using this skill without like a purpose, and just like you're at range, just CC them. It's very easy just to get knocked out of it. Another thing to look out for is just our, our regular stomps. It gives you minus 15... Let's see, let's look at it before I start saying some stuff that um, isn't, isn't true. Alright, so it does a stiffness, and it gives you minus 20% attack speed, movement speed, and it also reduces your evasion. So, <sighs> this skill you really don't want to get hit by. Usually a good Zerker would want to throw one of these on, which is 30%, and then do one of these, which is already like 50% slow on you. The thing is, is that you could also add skill add-ons to your Devastation right here, which I do. So you're getting like around 60% slowed with that. And what a Zerker will want to do is they would like to slow you for 60 to 70%. And they will get comboed on purpose just for, your, just for you to full combo them. But you're so slow that you can't full combo them that they just get up and grab you. So just watch out for the slows for Zerker. Watch out for this... Just respect this. Out of anything in the video, just take this away. Whenever a Zerker devastates, whenever they do the Pikachu move, do not or do not gamble with it. Respect it. And if you're slowed from a Zerker, run away. 
If you have two slows on you, they're at extreme advantage and they're just going to try to go after you. Another thing too is that you should also slow Zerker too in advance because they're also very weak against slows. I think it only takes like about 30 to 40% to throw off a Zerker and just make them completely a potato. Another thing too is that Zerker has a bunch of uh, what's I call pre-buffs. Well, Zerker wants to pre-buff on you. And what I mean by pre-buff is like whenever you see a Zerker running around and they look like they're just like doing some random stuff. That, that, that's all for a reason. So whenever a Zerker does this, it gives us 20% attack speed. Whenever a Zerker does this right here, it gives us uh, 16 AP. Or we could just do this right here, it also gives us 16 AP. So there's two ways to do it. Also, the other one too is doing this right here, which gives us 20% uh, movement speed. Another skill too to look out for is this right here, also gives 20% movement speed. So whenever you see a Zerker pre-buffing and they're doing this right here, you want to pressure them while they're pre-buffing. You do not want to give Zerker enough space so they can pre-buff. Because if you give Zerker enough time to pre-buff, oh dude, you're, you are gonna, you're gonna eat it real quick. So whenever you see a Zerker do this or any type of things like this, you want to pressure them. You want to pressure them. So make sure you punish the pre-buffs. Because this is all for a reason. Whenever Zerker gets uh, attack speed or movement speed, our shake-offs and our, our lava piercers and our giant leaps become even longer range. Which means they could set up for more opportunities against you. So whatever you do, do not allow a Zerker to pre-buff. Do not give them the space. And if, they, if you give the Zerker the space, be prepared for a pretty hard engage from them. Okay, so let's go over Zerker's game plan. I'm pretty sure you guys already could tell what Zerker's game plan is. Zerker wants to be able to get their pre-buffs up as much as possible. The thing is, is that it's kind of hard for a Zerker to get all their pre-buffs up at the same time. So usually they stick with the attack speed one because it allows the Zerker to cancel into more movement options a lot quicker, which makes his toolkit a lot easier to engage on. The second thing Zerker wants to do other than trying to get his pre-buffs up is to slow you. He wants to slow you. That's the way how he wants to do it. So it's a lot easier to grab someone or to CC someone in the game if they're slowed. And it's a lot easier to grab someone and to CC someone in the game if the target is slowed and you have an attack speed buff and so on and so forth. So the game plan of a Zerker is just to make sure that he has his buffs up and that you are slow. He's not going to fully commit into anything unless you have unless one of those conditions is met. Either you're slowed or if you have the if you allowed him to get a pre-buff, then he's probably going to engage on you and just actually test to see if he get uh he, if he could actually get the stun or the combo off. But most good Zerkers, they wait until the slow. And most good Zerkers, it's, it's either slow or nothing. So that's the way how you safely play Zerker. So most likely you're not going to expect a full-on like engage from a Zerker. Unless you misplay very hard and they just grab you out of nowhere. But yeah, most Zerkers are just going to wait for the slow to stack. And then they're going to actually start pressuring you really hard with the intent to finish the fight. So that's the Zerker's game plan. Okay, on to moving. How to tell if you are good if you how to tell if you are doing good against a Zerker. So I always go by the rule of if a Zerker just flat out grabs you with any type of CC or any stacks or slows, you're probably doing something wrong. So let's say hypothetically the opponent is a dummy right here. And I just casually walk up to him and just grab him. Yeah, that's 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 pretty bad. So if you're just getting grabbed like that without any like stacks of like slows or any stiffnesses or any like what's that called? Like if you're consistently getting grabbed, like four or five fights in a row without any type of stacks or any type of CC, you're probably doing bad against the Zerker. And you might you might want to either slow them or just reevaluate the fight and see the way how their playstyle is. One thing I forgot to mention is that each Zerker has their own unique playstyle. I know that some classes, they all play the same, they all want to do the same stuff. The thing is, is that there's very different types of Zerkers. For me, I play a very aggressive Zerker, and I want to be in your face. Most of the top tier Zerkers, like Noodle, 
slash Ming and Caillou and Wako, they like to play very passive aggressive counter Zerker where they just want to see what you do, wait for you to mess up, and they punish you. So it just it depends on the fight, but the way how you know if you're doing bad against a Zerker, if a Zerker just goes in and just grabs you like this without any type of like sauce of like slows or stiffens or anything. So they're just like moving around, blah blah blah. They're just you know they're dancing around and all of a sudden Oh, well, that grab didn't land. A bad example, but they just do this and they grab you without anything and it's very consistent. Of course, it's going to happen once in a while because they could read you, but a Zerker only throws out a grab if they know it's going to hit. And we call those cold grabs. Whenever we throw out a cold grab, we're pretty confident that it's going to hit. If not, we don't throw out a cold grab. That's why it's called a cold grab. So, yeah, that's how you know if you're doing good against a Zerker is if they're not throwing that many cold grabs. Um, they're also using all these crazy unique movement options just to stay out of it. They're also playing very scared against you. And they're actually like playing very methodical and just only going in at you whenever they have Lava Piercer up or any type of movement ability. So yeah, keep that in mind. Now let's go over things to punish. Like I said before, whenever you see Zerker in their Axe form, you want to punish it. So anytime they're in the Axe form, unless they're doing this right here, which is the Goomba Stomp Predatory Hunt, this has super armor and it knocks down every single time you land. So you definitely don't want to be underneath this. But anytime, anything other than that, you always go on on them whenever they're in Axe form. Punish the Axe form. Another thing too is whenever a Zerker heals, whenever they pop any of these heals, get behind them. Deal damage to them. The heals don't heal for that much no more. Back then they were OP, now they're just kind of whatever. But yeah, Zerkers are usually very stationary whenever it comes to uh, these heals. So whenever you see a Zerker just healing, just get behind them and start hitting their back. They're not going to net any health or just drop a slow on them because they cannot move from that at all. So yeah, take advantage of a Zerker healing. Punish them. If not, just grab them. Whenever they're healing like that, that's a very, very beginner mistake that zerkers do i remember learning zerker and i was running away from a fight because i was low health and i was like oh well i have a heal that gives me a lot of health but it keeps me stationary so i went like this and you know what i did i got grabbed because i can't cancel out of this fast i need to play look i'm trying to cancel out of it that's how quick i could cancel out of it i'm trying to cancel out of this though this is how i'm trying to cancel out of it right now that's how fast i could cancel out of it so whenever a zerker pops a heal punish it Get behind them, get that extra back attack damage, drop a slow, eat, fuck it, grab, like, do anything while they're in that. Another thing too, there's this skill called Lava Piercer, whenever a Zerker just runs at you like a maniac. It's protected, but the thing is, right after it ends, you could punish them pretty hard because there's a small little gap that is not protected in Lava Piercer, which is pretty crazy. And I definitely did get hit out of this all the time. So whenever you see a Zerker and Lava Piercer like this, and you know they're about to end it, throw a little micro, like throw a little, what's that called? Multi-hit Stiffen or, or a multi-hit Knockdown or something like that. Just anything, any multi-hit CC would actually wreck this skill because a lot of Zerkers like to cancel into something unsafe after Lava Piercer for a quick second. So right here, Always punish it whenever they get out of Lava Piercer. So, yeah, that's a thing too. A lot of Zerkers also like to do a cold grab after Lava Piercer. So, just look out for the Lava Piercer and see if you can get a cheeky like hit out of it. It's really easy to know when a Zerker is going to come out of Lava Piercer because it's very predictable. And this is why we use Click to Move on Lava Piercer so you don't really uh, know where we're going to go with it. But if you're playing against a very, like, New Zerker, yeah, it's pretty obvious to tell where they're going to go with Lava Piercer. And it's super easy to knock them out of it. The thing is, Lava Piercer is protected in the run, but usually we like to cancel it into stuff that isn't protected. Another common thing to do is uh, people Lava Piercer and then they straight up go into this, which is like the, the, the tackle. So the tackle is not protected. So you could just instantly just knock them out of it. Usually, whenever you see a Lava Piercer, Expect a unsafe skill to come out after. That's the only way you could pressure Lava Piercer. I've seen people pressure Lava Piercer with a grab, but it's very hard because desync is a 
existed. So yeah, whenever you see a Zerker with a grab, that's another thing to punish too because it takes us a lot, a lot of time to actually recover from a grab that has whiffed. And it's pretty obvious to see when a Zerker has whiffed a grab because we have this big hand and we're playing the biggest character and it's pretty obvious to see how a Zerker whiffs a grab. So let's do each grab with animation one by one. So this is E grab whiff, which is our quickest grab. That's a whiff. Usually you could punish it, but it's kind of fast, so you really can't. The one grab that I want to see you guys punish is our most strongest grab because it has the most range. Is our is our rock smash. And rock smash has a devastating uh whiff. So if you whiff with rock smash, you're in a bad spot. So this is the whiff. It's a pretty bad whiff because you have to actually like wait a while before you can actually cancel it. The other grab is our awakening grab, which is called rooting. It's also kind of fast. So just make sure you whiff. Whenever a Zerker throws a grab, except for the awakening grab, it puts us into axe form. And you know what I said about axe form? Axe form is not protected at all. So whenever you see a Zerker grab, Oh snap, I'm an axe form. Oh, you know what that means? Free CC because the Zerker is instantly going to try to go and get some protection by sw swapping back into Awakening. So most Zerkers, they like to, just whenever they whiff a grab, instantly swap back into their Awakening. And like what I said about Awakening is that whenever they take out their Awakening, it gives them a frontal. So that means you have to pressure it from behind. So they grab and you're like, oh snap, I mean, make sure you pressure them from behind. So yeah, those are the things to punish against Zerker. Also, make sure to punish this move right here. Uh, we went over it. And then, yeah, we're going to move on to the next topic. Okay, let's talk about the engage. There are several ways Zerkers like to, to engage. So whenever you're trying to do a 1v1 fight against a Zerker, before they say R, before the fight starts, they're already pre-buffing. So them getting the pre-buff is kind of cheeky and kind of like cheating in a way because they're, they're technically doing it before the fight starts and that's not cool, but you know what? We all do it. It's something we do with subconsciously. So yes, the Zerger is going to have the stacks on. So that means he's going to go in ham in the beginning. And there's several ways that Zerker does engage the fight when it's on neutral. So rule number one, we just talked about Lava Piercer. Whenever a Zerker does Lava Piercer, they immediately follow it up with something that's unsafe. So that is one thing that a lot of Zerkers like to do is the common Lava Piercer engage. Okay, so right after that, whenever you see a Zerker run at you with Lava Piercer, and you see them pick that as their engage, you, you know what to do. You know, you, you know what to do. Drop that multi-hit you know, CC whenever you think they're about to come out of it and reap the rewards and win the fight. But a lot of Zerkers, right? If they're if they're keen and they're 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 they know what they're doing and they use the lava piercer engage, they will lava piercer and then instantly back out with uh with any other skill. So that means they'll bait you into thinking that you're they're engaging, but they're actually just gonna back out at the end of your, your range for them to get punished, so they could see you waste a couple of your options. A lot of Zerkers do that. So if you see a Zerker using a lava piercer engage. It's most likely a bait, so don't take that as like, do not put 100% of your, your marbles onto that one. If it's a brand new Zerker, then yes, you could honestly just do anything after Lava Piercer and it would just work. Another engage that Zerkers like to do, and it's kind of a two-part engage with, with a couple of options, is they like to do this right here and then engage with Lava Piercer, or they like to do the kobe into a uh lot i guess yeah lava piercer is like the best option out of it so yeah it's either they do this into a giant leap or they go into a uh a stampede or they just go into a a lava piercer so those are the two best options the other option too is uh just straight up you know giant leap into lava piercer which is like extremely safe extremely safe but the thing is, is that all engages include Lava Piercer. So whenever you're fighting against a Zerker, just look for the Lava Piercer. Make the Zerker think 
that you're reacting, but you're also just waiting for the Lava Piercer to come out so you could try to get that multi-hit CC in whenever you think they're about to come out. So you're just waiting for the Zerker to use Lava Piercer because that's the most punishing thing that you could possibly use against a, a, a Zerker moving. The Zerkers will also want to just like Lava Piercer, swap into a frontal, and then drop a slow. That's another thing too. They're trying to get that slow in that grab. That's their game plan, man. They're already pre-buffed. They have one of the win conditions. So they're just trying to get a slow on you as fast as possible because all the pre-buffs last 10 seconds. So at the beginning of the engage, hey man, they have 10 seconds where they're extremely OP and they can close the gap on you. So if you make it really hard for them to like actually get what they want, then you're, you're looking pretty good, man. You're looking extremely well. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, now let's talk about certain class matchups. Zerker is the kind of class that likes to play very methodical, but it looks very dumb. Everyone thinks that Zerker is a very dumb class, that they wants to go in and grab you and that's all they care about. But no, there's a lot that goes behind Zerker. There's a lot that goes behind stacking the buffs. Is there, are they close enough to do an iframe cancel? Is Lava Piercer doing that? The click to move, where the mouse is at. It's a very it's a very involved class compared to most other classes. And there's a lot behind the scenes that is going on in the Zerker's brain. So let me teach you a couple of certain class matchups that you don't have to think that much, but the Zerker is also thinking a lot. <laughs> so number one, ninja or any type of iframe classes that just stay that could stay in iframe and rotate iframes. Zerker does not want to engage any iframe class. If a Zerker engages an iframe class, like I said, most engages have Lava Piercer and Lava Piercer is unprotected. Iframe classes could exploit that whenever they engage. So you know what they do? They don't engage. Or they look like they engage and then they instantly go into a devastation being protected and trying to drop a slow on you. And then they're just rotating, 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 and rotating super armors until you mess up. That's all a Zerker will do. But the thing is, is that if a Zerker engages an iframe class, they usually lose within the first 30 seconds. So make sure that if you're playing an iframe class, make the Zerker want to engage you. Make bait him into engaging you. Like that that's how most classes win, and that's how I lose most of the time too, as well. Whenever a Zerker lands a slow on you and it isn't a big slow, what if it's like the stomp slow that's only 15% and your class doesn't really care about 15% slow? Then you could just play passive and the Zerker might be like, oh yeah, this is my chance to go in on the iframe class because they're slowed by a little bit and they're playing passively. So that means that they must be weak. So they're going to go in and then all of a sudden you flip the tables on them because your, your class is superior on reacting to a Zerker Lava Piercer. Another thing too, if you're playing any type of range class, like Archer, Wizard, um, any type of good range class, watch out for this heal called Titan Blow. It hits ridiculously far. Each one of these hits is a uh, CC. So uh, yeah, um, make sure you you obviously don't get hit by this. And whenever a Zerker is at range, they can still get you, man. I'm, I'm very far away from these dummies. I'm still like actually ticking them. So this skill is like ridiculously OP. Like from that far you could hit people. But it's it's crazy. So if you're a range class, make sure to look out for, for this. For this move right here. Because it's a very long range knockdown and it actually hits pretty hard. A Zerker likes to break blocks and that's one of the skills that breaks the blocks. So what Zerker likes to do, if you're a block heavy class like Warrior, Valkyrie, uh, Guardian or uh, Nova, they like to do their little AP buff and their attack speed buff. And they like to just stack it and then just do this right here. Boom, your block is broken just from those three hits. It only takes two hits to break most blocks in the game. But if they're AP stacked and their, and their attack speed stacked, they can actually get the three hits off to break your block very easy. And once they know your block is broken, you know what they do? They go in and they just drop that damage. And that's how they usually win without a CC. And so yeah, that is basically it uh, with all the stuff that I want to show you guys. But I do have one more topic too. And I know I should uh, put this with how, you, how to tell if you're doing good against a Zerker. 
if a Zerker combos you and it doesn't look exactly like this, it doesn't look anything close to this, uh, the Zerker is styling on you. The Zerker is styling on you if it doesn't look like that. So let me show you an example of a style combo. <laughs> Because if a Zerker is styling on you, number one, they're either very good at the game, or number two, they're just having fun and they're just they're just styling on you. So this is like the classic style where they do the, the sideways swing. That's that's like the classic style. The other style that I've made in my recent videos is this style right here. If it doesn't look anything like the standard damage combo, they're they're styling on you. So that means like you need to up your game and make sure that they respect you. And whenever they get you in a combo, they want to do a kill combo that is 100% foolproof. So that's how you can tell. Another way to tell if you're doing good against a Zerker when they actually start using kill combos on you. And there's only one kill combo. I'm going to show it again just to reiterate. But yes, this is a Zerker kill combo. And if you don't see a Zerker use this kill combo on you, you might want to step up your game. But yeah, with that you guys, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you guys learned a lot. I recently hit a milestone in YouTube and I am now signed up for the content creator program. And let's see how that goes. Let's see if I become a content creator for BDO. And with that you guys, I do stream on Fridays and Saturdays. So whenever you guys have a chance, just leave a like below. I have my links to Twitch below, and yeah, I do appreciate the support. Make sure to subscribe, and let's uh, keep on making videos and having fun. Have a good rest of the day.